Hello and welcome. Today we speak with Australian singer-songwriter John Lynham. John, nice to talk to you. You too, Joel. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, a pleasure. Whenever we do these sorts of interviews, we do start at the very beginning. What? It's a logical place to start, isn't it? And uh, where does the John Lynham story start? I grew up in, in a little town called Dolby, which is uh, west of Toowoomba. We only had, you know, a, a couple of um, AM commercial radio stations, and um, like just from early as I can remember, like I, I really enjoyed. Like I grew up on on Elton John and and uh, Tom Petty and like Billy Joel and sort of stuff like that, more more commercial music, just simply because we that, that was all we had out there. And uh, with with the songwriting, it, it, it's it's probably more that commercial sort of uh, feel. Like I, I really like like a um, you know like, like a melodic sort of a song. I, I, yeah, like I mean, I think it it gave me a good grounding uh, as to, to keep songs simple but uh, effective, if that makes mm. any sense. But um, it does. Yeah, it's sort of it's a bit like that. So that's that's how it sort of started. And um, I never had any aspirations to to like um, be a musician or, or whatever. Like I've I've never really had a had a music lesson at all. It just it just seemed to happen. I at age oh, fourteen or something, I think I got my first drum kit, and I was doing a Doing gigs with um, with with a young guy that that won uh, one of the Gimpy Gimpy Master Talent Quest, Mark O'Shea, and yeah, so we 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 did plenty of music, and I, I learnt lots of him and his 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 family actually just um, just through yeah just through doing gigs as a drummer and and watching guitarists and and stuff like that. So that's 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 basically how it how it began, yeah. Why the drums? Uh, you know, I mean, the, normally people that, that are drummers are pretty passionate about that. You, you, you've obviously moved away from the drums now, but was there a, a certain influence as to why you picked up the drumsticks? I, th- I think I just always loved, loved groove. You know, like I, um, I remember always like, like listening to, um, like I think one of my first tapes was Jimmy Barnes when he first went solo. I used to get out all uh, Mum's pots and and tap away, and <laughs> like I just. <laughs> I just I just liked yeah groove and and uh, and beats and stuff I guess you know I grew up on a lot of ACDC which I, I thought was <laughs> I was pretty cool you know just the um, obviously the uh, the groove and the um, stuff like that so that's how and drums or basically I think in the end when I was about twenty I started I mean I've always played a little bit of guitar I just sort of taught myself and uh, and I was about about twenty one and, and Mark had. had uh, gone on and, and pursued his solo career, and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm sick of carrying these drums around. So <laughs> I thought it would figure it'd be easy to, you know, have, like pick up the acoustic guitar and a PA. And so I've just sort of done this solo acoustic gigs and whatnot from from sort of 20 on. It's a pretty tough life that, you, that you've chosen, isn't it? Obviously, you're working from the heart. It's a passion, but yeah. pretty hard to make a living out of it. Definitely is, like especially you know, writing your own stuff and. Yeah, trying to um, make money as a um, as an original artist, but um, like I've I've played covers. Like music's been pretty good to me in that way. Like um, especially you know doing solo acoustic, you can you can sort of go anywhere. And I've been lucky enough to live and play in Ireland for for nine months and in in uh, 2004 and and uh, did a little bit in America in 2005 and. So, like covers, is, playing covers is basically what gets you through. Gets the keeps food in the belly and keeps the keeps the rent paid. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it certainly certainly is, Joel. It's it's no uh, it's no easy gig. I think if there was some sort of special, you know, thing, thing to um, to be able to do it, you could, you know, <laughs> everyone would be doing it and making <laughs> making a <it> killing. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Did you have anybody, you know, a parent or, or or an elder say to you, you know, why don't you do something normal with your life? You know, you can't you can't make any money out of music. Yeah, certainly, certainly. My, my, my dad was um, my dad was like that. He's like, oh, like I think he had to learn to uh, lip lip read the TV, like just from the drums and and noise coming out of the house that that grew up in the uh, 
yeah, he used to say, oh, man, like, you know, you, you, you've got to get some sort of apprenticeship behind you and stuff, and, and which which I did. I, I end up taking the easiest one I could get. The first one was um, like a, a painter and decorator, so <laughs> I, 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 I did that to, to the day I finished my apprenticeship, and yeah, I haven't haven't really picked up a brush since, <laughs> so... I suppose the good thing about that, is, I mean, painting and decorating, it's, uh, well, not to have a go at the painters out there, but it's a boring job. And uh, if ever there's going to keep you, something that's going to keep you inspired is to not go back to it, it's painting the side of a house, isn't it? Oh, that's right, that's right, mate, for sure. Like, it's, um, I think the only thing I used, to, I used to like about it, like, I did my apprenticeship, uh, in, in Toowoomba and we, we could get FM radio there, so it was great. Like, we just put <laughs> triple M on and, you know, groove away all day. That, that was my sort of, thing you know but um yeah certainly you've only got to got to look back on those those hot days and the smell of paint and it um certainly keeps you cracking with your music uh, john how do you how do you avoid being a, a knockoff of somebody else if you're a singer songwriter well i mean first of all when you're writing a song i mean haven't all the good songs been written how do you how do you not tap in and all of a sudden this starts sounding a bit like you know like a rolling stone or something i mean how do you stay unique that's a, that's a great question, Joel. In my my situation, anyway, is is, is playing covers for so long. It um, it really gives you a good grounding. I mean, in in terms of and, and completely different uh, styles. You know, like there's there's so many different inf- influences that you can sort of draw from. I think we all here in Australia, because we're only a fairly fairly new country, but but we are heavily influenced by, you know, like American music. I mean, we we sort of you know, grew, grew up on it really. You know, and uh, so I mm. think, yeah, it just sort of it just sort of happens how it happens. But I, I do know what you mean. But, um, yeah, it was, it's somebody. A, it's a very hard question to answer, actually. It's a, yeah. Well, yeah. as somebody who's never picked up a good guitar and never written a song, I, I, all I can think of is, is how do you come up with new material? It must be incredibly hard. How do you write songs, for example, John? I mean, I remember we mentioned like a Rolling Stone. I mean, I remember Bob Dylan saying that the songs are already out there. He just takes a pen and writes them down. It, it, does it come, sort of come for you like that? They're sort of in you and they just flood out? Is that how it works for you? Yeah, it does. It does. Songwriting for me has only really, I mean, got... Serious over the last couple of years, I um like some songs of like will, will take me. Well, for instance, um like took for granted. I, I wrote ten years ago in about ten minutes, and then um like you know there's there's, there's other songs I've written. I've I've had a, had a, like a verse and a chorus, and then ten years later finished the you know the um the song. So there's no certain technique. If you, or for for me anyway, it's just I'll, I'll often come up with um, basically like, like a melody. I'll hear a chorus, and, and sometimes I can write a song around that. I don't have any formula, and I, I, I try not to um, work it out either because I'm, I'm scared it'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sort of just depends. But of late, I mean, like, like writing for me sometimes, like it, it, it can be very um, therapeutic. Honestly, I mean, I, I can't write, for instance, uh, about something that I haven't personally experienced myself in some way it has to be honest for me and um every song's different it um yeah it just depends there's certainly no definite uh structured format uh for me anyway it's um they just come and they go and then some some songs you, you might have half a song for you know so long but i'm i'm learning more about it all the time and it's it, 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 it's a great great feeling when you when, when you finish a song i tell you <laughs> all i want for you to Understand Well I am not the man I think I am Cause I've done everything wrong Possible Cause I believe That I've been free from hell Cause I'm still here Alive and doing well Cause I took for granted Oh my Said I'll be fine Cause I cracked the thunder Things ain't right Well I took four grants And I took four grants Oh Under 
first in Well, sometimes I get lost and I feel so scared But I know that you will see me through Cause all I have to do is talk to you Today's another day that I own For granted, oh my God, and you tap me under. Said I'll be fine. Cause I crack the thunder. Things ain't the right. Cause I took for granted. I took for granted. Understand from this day on, I'll try as hard as I can. 